Hello everyone, welcome to The Curious World of Alice. A few years ago, I developed neck pain. On some days, I didn't want my head to be on my neck. And on other days, the discomfort would move towards the back of my shoulders. And other days, it would be on the side of my body. I knew that it was caused by the fact that I was sitting. And the challenge is I sit for a living. My employment requires me to sit all day long. At the office, I requested for an ergonomic assessment and they gave me a new chair. They told me how my posture should be when I'm seated. And I also thought that it might be caused by my mouse movement because it's on the right side. So I learned to use the mouse with my left side. I guess that would be one of the perks of having neck pain on your dominant side. In any case, it helped at the beginning. It did get better and then it didn't. And I realized that it's definitely my positioning at the office because when I came back from vacation, after a couple of weeks being away at that time, I quickly redeveloped after several days of being back at the office. So I went on a problem solving mode and started figuring out how to relieve myself of this neck pain. I decided to go see a physiotherapist for the first time in my life. And I learned that my problem in the neck does not stem from a neck problem because the muscle actually is attached from the neck which are the traps and it connects to the lats and then they connect to the oblique so my neck problem is actually an abs problem and my obliques were not strong enough therefore it actually pulls towards the other side and by that happening it's like one string that is my obliques pulling to the opposite side and my neck experiencing that tension all the way from my ab. At the physio appointment, he didn't even work on my neck directly. And then he sent me home with exercises to strengthen my lats and my obliques. I will not go into details with the actual exercises because there are many paramedic professionals on the internet that will provide you with exercises and because I'm not a professional, I don't feel like I'm certified to share that. But what is important to know is when you have neck pain, don't just necessarily look for exercises for your neck. The source of the problem may be elsewhere. Like a good student would do, I went home and did the exercises. What was the most challenging part about the exercises were not necessarily the actual exercise, but to count the reps and the sets. I really don't enjoy the mundane task of needing to count because you're literally counting from one to six or one to eight, and then you do that three times, and depending on how many types of exercises you have to do, then you do that many, many more times. And what I found to be helpful is by using an interval timer. Because with an interval timer, not only do you not need to count, but it also helps you allocate the specific amount of time that you desire and you know how to manage your day a little better. For example, I did one minute per exercise and I knew that it didn't fit all my reps and all my sets in that one minute, but it was still a better way to manage fitting those exercises into my day. And if I had five exercises, it would just be five minutes and a little bit more to complete the entire physio exercise. I also put five seconds in between each so that it gave me time to transition. And that in my mind was so much more manageable than needing to count and not knowing how much time it actually takes to complete the exercise. And after two to three weeks, the problem was completely gone. But because it still felt like a chore and most people don't like doing chores, I stopped the exercise as soon as it felt better. 
And that was when the problem eventually and quickly resurrected. The crazy thing about physio exercises is I nearly forgot that I had them or that I acquired that skill. And then I just never really went back into the routine of redoing those physio exercises. And I also didn't go back to that physio as much as I thought he was very helpful because it takes time and money and resources. So I also didn't think that he was going to tell me anything new that I didn't already learn from him but it wasn't a sustainable method to keep my neck pain from going away. And that's when I explored another option. Before I elaborate on the other options that I've explored, I would like to say that the physio did really help, but it's persisting and the perseverance that is required to continue doing those exercises that was the biggest challenge. So making good habits is key to success. And I will share an amusing story with you about flossing. When I was a student, I decided to clean my teeth at a dental hygienist school where you go three times. Each session was one hour. At the first appointment, it was more of an assessment and she told me these, these, these areas required improvement and to come back the following week where she will assess again. And one of the key points that she said is flossing. So I flossed diligently every single night within that one week and there was improvement. But then I have to go back again the following week. So then I flossed every night again for a second week. And now I've developed the habit of flossing every single night since those two weeks that I would wake up in the middle of the night if I haven't flossed just to complete my daily routine. The beauty of that experience is it only took two weeks for me to instill that habit. And yes, I mean, flossing might be a controversial topic because there were studies that was proven that flossing is not as necessary as required. But at this point, the point is, it only takes two weeks to form a good habit. Most people would tell you that exercise is good for your well-being and it's not a big secret and there is no magic to the neck problem solution. But I would like to mention and emphasize that the frequency is so much more important than the duration. For example, doing a few minutes, like 10 to 15 minutes a day is much better than working out one hour per week. Even though in the total scheme of things, you will do less than 60 minutes within those 10 to 15 minutes per day, several days a week. I definitely like doing yoga and it definitely helps strengthen the core and it also really helps with the hip flexor. Uh, once you hit a certain age, preparing to sit all day long requires effort. So yoga and the flow in yoga movements really prepares you to sit all day. The best part is you could do it while you're half asleep because it's low intensity. I try to do yoga first thing in the morning three to five times a week for 10 minutes, sometimes more, right here at home with a nap. And I learned to instill this good habit in doing it first thing in the morning when I came back from halfway around the world and was extremely jet lagged for several weeks. And at that time, because my work is very flexible with the time we go in and leave, I knew that I should go to the office first thing in the morning when I wake up at 4 a.m. or as soon as possible because I would feel extremely tired by 3 p.m. And I have a really good friend who suggested that instead of going in, why don't I try to appreciate the morning? Typically, people like to perhaps drink coffee or read the newspaper. I don't do any of those. So that's when I learned to do yoga almost every day. The jet lag was over within two weeks. And by that time I had acquired that morning habit into my routine. 
If you prefer a higher intensity workout, I definitely recommend HIIT. It's really good in the short burst of energy and it also works a lot on your core because you end up doing a lot of planks. You don't need a lot of space. It provides a good sweat and it's a lot of variations of short bursts of exercises. I personally don't enjoy redundancies. And maybe yoga and HIIT isn't the type of exercise that you prefer. The importance is it have to be strength and training. It can't just be a walk at the park. I do a lot of team sports and that even with a lot of running does not suffice. It is very important to start slow, especially if you haven't been very active in the past little while and to listen to your body because it is possible to injure it. Just tune in to what your body is telling you. I'd like to also mention that it's okay that yoga or HIIT is not the type of exercise that you would normally do. When I told a colleague about my pr approach on this neck pain, he ended up doing 100 push-ups a day. And you don't have to do 100 push-ups a day, but it will definitely strengthen your core. It really improved his problem, but as most people's challenges are not to persevere with that exercise that will provide the solution, he did the same and the neck problem had reinstated in his body. Your posture is very important and I find it's something that most of us don't think about regularly or maybe never. Myself, I learned that my shoulders are a little bit too forward and so is my neck. So really what that means is I have to push my neck until it feels like I'm creating a double chin. And then my shoulders, I just have to push it back. And as much as I'm conscious about it now, it still requires effort for me to think about it. The good thing about strengthening your core is when your core is strong, you don't have to be as deliberate about your posture. Of course, a good sitting posture and a good standing posture is always helpful and in the long run, very important. The alignment to your body is everything that keeps it well maintained. But as much as that is important, if you have a strong core or if you build one, it will certainly help you in being less perfect in some of the other importance to take care of your body and to reduce your neck pain. As much as neck pain is a pain in your butt or more specifically a pain in your neck, I find that it gave me an opportunity to learn more about my body and to listen to it. It was almost a blessing in disguise. I also learned that the muscles are so interconnected. So when you have a problem in one place, often it's not really the source of the problem and you have to learn a little bit more about how to find a solution to resolve it. And today is the day to start working on your core muscles to get rid of your neck pain. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and bye everyone.